In this video, we're going to be talking about one of my most anticipated films of 2022. <laughs> The Northman is a film that I've been excited for to come out for a long time, ever since The Lighthouse came out. I was excited to see Egger's next project. So this video we're going to talk about some of my thoughts on this film. So what's the film about? We follow Prince Amleth, who is on the verge of becoming the next king. However, his father, played by Ethan Hawke, is brutally murdered by his uncle. Ultimately, his mother is then kidnapped and Amleth is forced to flee this place. Two decades later, Amleth has become this much stronger warrior and he's on this revenge mission to save his mother, kill his uncle, and avenge his father. The narrative follows the tale, which ultimately inspired Shakespeare to write Hamlet. So most people are gonna be very familiar with the story. However, there's a few twists along the way, but if you know Hamlet, you're pretty much gonna know the plot of this film. Saying that, I think this is Egger's most accessible film. I think wider audiences could get into this film in terms of the setting, the language compared to the two films, which may have been a little bit harder to understand. I think a lot of people can access this one and I think it's a good stepping stone for people to get into his previous films. So in terms of positives, what I really liked is that they gave Eggers much more of a budget and you can tell in terms of the camera work, the production, costume, it's there. You can see that the budget has actually affected what he was able to capture within this film. The score is absolutely fantastic. It fits perfectly within this Viking genre and works to sort of tell the narrative make you feel unsettled when it needs to and ramps you up for those much more violent and sort of physical moments. There are various dreamlike sequences throughout the film that are in this sort of black and white effect and these are my favourite moments because they feel the most surreal. I think they really add to what we've seen previously with Robert Eggers' direction, um, therefore I think they were the best parts of the film. So one of my main issues is the fact that this is a story that we've heard again and again in pop culture. Obviously, if you know the play Hamlet, you know the story pretty much, or if you've seen any of the films, TV, that's always been worked into various plot lines. Therefore, making this film pretty predictable. However, there are some moments which do change that sort of projection, which you may think would happen in Hamlet or anything of that nature in terms of a revenge story. There are a few twists along the way, but generally it's quite a predictable plot. The runtime of this film is his longest so far. It sits at two hours, 20 minutes, whereas The Witch was an hour and 32 minutes and The Lighthouse was one hour 50. I feel like there could have been some moments which could have been cut out and the plot would have been the same, but you could argue that was all for character and they needed the time progression uh, to work on this um, revenge element. But I think it was a little bit too long. You could have cut off 10, 20 minutes really. So in terms of my last spoiler-free negative was the fact that they cast Nicole Kidman as Alexander Skarsgård's mother. And if you've seen Big Little Lies, you know that they were cast as husband and wife. So in terms of the aging, I wasn't too sold on that. Um, and ultimately that does play a part in the film. Um, so that was a little bit unusual, but you know, it's tiny, but it, it did rustle some feathers in me. So from here on, we're gonna talk some spoilers. So if you've not seen it yet, check the timestamps and maybe just skip forward. Uh, but we're gonna get into some spoiler talk here. As I said previously, I think the story was predictable. However, there is a moment between Amleth and his mother when he sort of confronts her. And then he has that moment where he says, I need to save you from your husband, which is also Amleth's uncle. But no, she actually spins it on the head. She's like, no, no, your father was a horrible man. He's, your uncle has been a great man to me and has sort of saved me and changed my perspective. It's much more in line with that. But then it sort of leaves you to question, was she lying? Was it reality? Was she trying to save herself? Um, and obviously that doesn't really happen in Hamlet. And this was a different turning point and I was intrigued here. I thought Nicole Kidman delivered it really, really well in this moment um, and sort of shook up the story in terms of what you thought was going to happen. And that left you conflicted in terms of whether to trust her as a character from there on out. Some of my favourite moments were when it got more bloody um, it, and people were referring to it as a bloodbath. You know, lots of uh, reviews are coming out saying this is really gory um, but it wasn't really if you've seen things like Game of Thrones or any sort of horror films you know it wasn't that bad um, probably the most one of the most shocking parts was when they're playing that sport Amleth just absolutely like headbutts this character constantly I was like okay this is this is relentless this is not going to end um, so there's, there's moments like that but then I was kind of laughing at the same time is that weird to say but um, I don't think it was that bad in terms of the violence and I thought it really sort of 
reflected what Vikings were truly like, um, which, you know, can be accurately portrayed in films and sometimes isn't. Um, but I think they got that down to a T, especially in terms of the raiding of villages as well. Um, I think they got that down really, really well. I thought some of the side characters when they were on screen were perfectly used. Ethan Hawke was great, uh, a different kind of character for him, um, especially because I'm watching Moon Knight at the moment. Very, very different there. Uh, I thought he did a great job with what he was given. Uh, Willem Dafoe, great. Uh, Bjork, great. So I thought the support cast was excellent. They did a really, really good job uh, with the roles they were given. So this film wasn't perfect, so let's get into some spoiler negatives. As I just said, the supporting cast were great. However, I think they were very sparsely used. You have actors such as Willem Dafoe, Kate Dickey, and Ralph Innocent, who he has previously worked with, uh, both in The Witch and The Lighthouse. However, I think they were very much underused. I really think he could have done a lot more. I think Willem Dafoe was perfect as this sort of jester, witch kind of character. And then the other two were really much just passing characters. I thought they were really, really underused. In terms of where there were main characters in his other films, um, it was like, oh, it's a little, there's a little reference if you've seen my previous work, but I think they, they were wasted in this film. One of the main issues that I have with this film is the scale of it, especially when we see Amleth come back onto his mission and is there to avenge his father by killing his uncle. And you go back and we see Feng's settlement. It's a lot different to how it initially started in the film but it just felt so small and whether that is you know an accurate re representation i'm sure it is but i just expected much more of a scale we had that scale very much earlier in the film in terms of uh, amleth doing those raids with this sort of new um sort of group that he's found you know the sort of wolf-like men um, that had a scale to it however when we moved to feng's settlement it felt really small and obviously i know uh, eggers is familiar with using small casts, small settings in The Witch and The Lighthouse. However, with a Viking environment, I thought he could have utilised that more and had a bigger feel to it. And there's moments where Amleth sort of reveals himself like, yes, I am uh, my father's son, you killed him. And he sort of is at the top of this sort of hill and just comes down. You're like, does he have no support? Does he have no one with him? And it was quite painful and awkward to watch at times. I felt at least in terms of him sort of slowly going through one by one. I was like, oh, okay, it's just one man versus a few people. Um, so I think the scaling of the amount of people in the environment was just too small. I think they could have sort of padded that out in that settlement. So in conclusion, I did enjoy The Northman. I thought it was a good film. I think the casting was great, performances were great, um, but it just wasn't as weird as I'd like it to be. Not as, you know, it's not touched the lighthouse in my opinion. Um, I think it's a great film, accessible to many, and I think this will get a lot of people into Edgar's work and hopefully, you know, get a bit more into the sort of horror, um, sort of mythology sort of genre uh, that's sort of coming out at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good film. Not my favourite of his. So where does it rank amongst Edgar's previous projects? At the top for me, it still is The Lighthouse, which I gave four and a half stars for. And then I would say The Northman, which I'm giving three and a half stars. And then The Witch sits just below at three stars. I hope you guys enjoyed the review of The Northman. If you've seen it, let me know your thoughts down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? How does it compare to Edgar's other work? I'd love to check out your thoughts down below. And if you haven't seen it yet, hopefully you've got a bit more of an idea of what to expect without it being spoiled. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon for another popcorn chat.